figured it was time to get back to uh, a project that I started a while ago, um, which was started with the detection um, uh, that I was, the optical detection that I was putting around my turnouts for train detection, for uh, signaling, but also for a certain amount of automation, um, which comes later. Uh, but the next thing that I was planning on doing was uh, powering some turnouts. Right now I've just got uh, these Caboose Industry ground throws, which are good. They do the job. There's nothing wrong with them. They look you know, sort of railroady, if a little bit out of scale. But it doesn't matter. They're, they're solid. They work. They're relatively inexpensive, or at least they were back when I was buying them by the shovel load. Uh, no idea what they cost these days. But anyway, that's, that's an aside. Um, so here's a little mock-up that I figured out. Just a random leftover turnout. This was a used one that I bought from somebody. And I mocked up a little servo onto the bottom of it. Now this one, uh, what, I, what I've done on, on a couple of turnouts, just to put a remote control on them, ran a piece of brass tubing down there. This mock-up's just got a piece of Q-tip tubing. But, and a piece of wire bent and dropped into the hole on the turnout where the rivet is. And I've used this on the, on a club layout before and and that arrangement works pretty well. The twist in the wire, or the, the wire gives you a little bit of springiness to put some pressure on the points. Um, but my experimenting is with the servo motor, um, and how to mount it. This is my first experiment. The, can we see this? The brackets are just made out of pieces of metal that I cut out of the, I don't know, the computer case or something, power supply case, I think, and just bent them and drilled them and stuck them in there. And then the turnout, or the, uh, turn out itself underneath the the wire from the other side comes up through the hole makes a couple of 90 degree bends and into there that was okay that was kind of fiddly to put together so I decided to try some other methods and I'll just cut and mount up my my next plan here actually before I do that I should actually show you how it works um, so I've got just a, a nano with the demo sketch that comes with the Arduino uh, IDE loaded. The sketch called Knob uh, in the servo libraries. And basically, um, there's just, that's a very small area of its motion. Uh, can we see it better from the end, maybe? So it only has to move that much. So these servos will go 180 degrees. And once I actually get going on this, I can program just a normal and reverse position, just whatever that number happens to be. And it'll go there rather than just turning the knob like I'm doing. And so there's one direction. There's the other direction. And if I wanted to, I could program slow motion. Or I could just have, them sl have it slam like a solenoid would. I think slow motion would be nice. Anyway, so that's that one. And it works. I and mean, on the layout, I'm not going to use this plastic tubing. That's just what I had for my quick, cheap experiment. So now then, I'm going to mount up my other, uh, my next iteration of my experiment and see how well that one works. Okay, so here's my second idea for mounting. Um, I made this little strap out of some shim brass. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too thin and lightweight and it mangled when I, uh, I'm screwing it in, but I'm just going to hold it in there with my finger and see what happens. Um, some 
power on here. Man. Okay, so. That works, and the alignment's a little bit less critical. If I want it to uh, be, yeah. I think if I can make a bracket that's a little bit less cheesy than that. So that's my next plan. I'll have to see what I can find for some material. All right, next version. That's cleaner. This is made out of a chunk of aluminum strap that I got at the hardware store for a couple of bucks for a meter length. Um, the speed hole. Hmm. There was a blade in that at one point. The speed hole in there was originally, when I was making it, I thought I would leave the mounting lugs on the solenoid, or the servo motor. But then I just didn't have the patience to cut it big enough and precisely the right shape so I just made it like that um, and I bent it a little bit too long so I had to jam some sticky back insulating foam tape in there but it's nice and solid and seems to do the job The only thing I was concerned about in this mode was when I got to the extreme, would it pull on the thing? And this little, this is just a little bushing of the plastic, but I think this will be okay with the metal tubing that I was planning on using. It doesn't seem to be, where we go here, uh, focus, thank you doesn't seem to be pushing that up and out of the rivet hole. If I had a narrower piece of tubing in there, so there was less slop, I think that would be good. So, upsides with this aluminum. It's much more solid than this cheap shim brass. Um, it's not that expensive. Like I said, a couple of dollars for a meter or so of it. However, it is relatively thick um, this way which is much uh, why can't I keep staying in the camera here it's it's relatively thick uh, cross-section which means that the bend radii radiuses are huge and it's annoying to bend so I'm going to try one more material that I've got kicking around here And here is the third bracket that I made. The one, two, three, fourth bracket that I made. And it is made out of some stainless steel strapping, which is really thin, actually. It's just getting close here. It's not that much different thickness than the thickness of the blade of my X-Acto knife. However, being stainless steel, it's quite strong. Um, it's fairly solid. It doesn't bend easily. But that said, grab it with a couple of pairs of pliers and you make fairly sharp bends in it. Much sharper than, than the aluminum. Um, that's almost an Omega. Um, and I cut it just a little, bent it a little bit shorter so that I didn't have to worry about that foam tape up there. So it's, that's actually gripped solidly right now and I could tighten it more, but I don't have to. And it's nice and shiny. But most importantly, it holds the motor solidly. While it's moving.
So that is what I'm going to go with. Next step to do this upside down on the layout. So this is the turnout that I'm going to start my experiment with. I've already got the piece of brass tubing in there. And here's the wire, which is a similar, uh, same size wire that I was using over in my experiment. Drop that down into there. So there's that uh, caboose ground throw that I was talking about earlier. They work well for manually throwing, but I think this is going to be nicer. And there's the view from underneath with my piece of music wire coming through. So I'm going to have to give it a 90 degree bend and chop it off. Then I'm going to have to get into this area with my big hands and, and my skull and some light and try not to burn myself or knock all my stuff off the shelf although I'll probably move it and I don't think there's room for me and the camera under there so I'll come back to you guys once I've got it more or less mounted it's going to look pretty much the same as it did on my demo board anyway all right there it is installed a certain amount of contortion and possibly a little bit of language that uh it would get me in trouble with the missus if the kids heard it, but there it is installed on its bracket. And I've got my little testomatic there. And here we are up top side. Okay. Fairly solid spring tension there spring tension caused by that centimeter or so of wire there and the same thing down underneath hmm servos are a bit noisy but again that's got some salt with spring tension against it so if I come against it without turning it properly that's going to cause a derailment, which that's fair. That's what would happen in the real world on a real railroad anyway. But that's part of what I'm heading towards because I've got detection over here and over here. So the Arduino that's driving this guy will monitor those and make sure that I don't run a, through a switch that's set the wrong way. Which will make life much more fun when I'm doing solo running around here. But that's the continuing saga of this project. And there's an awful lot of things that still need doing here too. Including more turnouts. Initially I'm just going to do all the mainline turnouts. Uh, which I've got detection on most of them already, just not going anywhere. And that should do it for today.